Hello friends! Hello, hello! My name is Rachel Alford from Cozy Nooks Designs and I am so excited to be able to join you guys today. So anyway, um, let me know in the comments where you're from and tell me about the weather because we have an excessive heat warning right now and it is hot. <laughs> so let me know if you're dealing with that too or if you've got cooler weather because I'm interested. Okay, so today I am going to talk a bit about the magazine, the autumn magazine that came out recently. Um, I'm in this magazine! And so I am so excited to be able to go over the design that I made and um, show you some tips that I've learned along the years. So anyway, look how cute. I love it. Fall is my favorite season and I just I just love all the fall things so oh cool and foggy Patricia I am jealous <laughs> that sounds magical so again if you are just joining us let me know where you are right now where you're from and the weather because we have an excessive heat warning here in Missouri right now so oh humid in Pittsburgh I grew up not far from Pittsburgh actually so I know all about that too <laughs> Okay, so today we're going to go over intarsia and tapestry crochet, but first I want to show you in the magazine, there is actually on page 14, there is an in-depth tutorial with pictures showing tapestry crochet tips, which is so helpful. So, um, ooh, Nepal, that's cool. Heat Advisory, North Carolina as well. Ooh, I think, yeah, a lot of the country, a lot of the U.S. right now, I think might be <laughs> under a heat advisory. So anyway, um, it shows lots of different tapestry designs in this magazine, and so that's why there's that helpful tip on page 14. And then let me show you my design that I made. This is the Hay Pumpkin Table Runner, as you can see. Right there, it's got, it says, hey pumpkin, sorry, it's backwards because I have my camera mirrored, but what it says is, hey pumpkin, and then there's a big pumpkin on this side and a big pumpkin on this side. And um, so anyway, I used mostly intarsia crochet techniques for this table runner, um, but tapestry, intarsia, and crochet is kind of loosely similar. Um, Basically, what I think the difference is, and some people may differ on what they actually think the difference is, but for me, intarsia is when you use bobbins, and then tapestry is when you more, uh, let me show you, when you have the colors that you carry across the color blocks. And so, like, for this one, this little sample here, you can see the colors peeking through. And um, the reason why I was trying to teach something one time, and that's why I purposely did it this way, but on page 14 of this magazine, it shows some really good tips that I, I actually had never heard of before. And so I learned some great things on this page 14. Um, so really, go check it out. So you can see, you can see the colors poking through. And that's when there is such a light color and then such a contrast in the color, sometimes that happens. So, but there are tips to negate that. Okay, so if you look in the magazine, it then has the graphs that you can follow along with showing how to make that table runner. All right, so today we are going to do a little sample and we're gonna make a C. We'll start making a C at least. We probably won't have time to finish it, but we'll start making a C. So I'm going to flip my camera up and then we will start together. Oh, yay. I'm glad that you bought the magazine, Marion. Yeah. I'm glad that you're excited like me and I will show you exactly what I did to be able to create that so that you can be successful. Okay, so let me flip this camera up and then I'll show you my hands. Just one second. Look at my fan because it's so hot. Just one second. 
gonna lower this down so that I can see as well. Okay, let me zoom in a little too. Okay, there we go. All right, so for this little swatch here, I am using Lion Brand Heartland yarn. I'll be using these two colors. I would show you the skein on this, but it is an explosion. <laughs> You can see it's a mess. So this is the pretty skein of the Heartland yarn. <laughs> can you guys relate? Um, so anyway, these are the two colors that I will be sampling to show you. And then here is our chart. You can see I've got my odd numbers on this side, even numbers, oop, even numbers on the left here. And so you start from the right and you work your way up zigzag 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 and you can see we change colors on row five okay so that is a right side row five is right side when you get to an even number then you work on the wrong side like i just did here this is i've done four rows so i just worked along the wrong side i turn and then i chain one and now I'm ready to do row five. Let me zoom in here. Row five. Okay. So row five has one, two, three, four, five of the cream. And then we switch to our contrasting color here. So most tapestry and intarsia crochet is worked in single crochet. So that is what I'm doing right now. There's two three, four. Okay, so this is our fifth, fifth stitch right here. And that is the last stitch before we switch colors. So what we need to do is we insert our hook, yarn over like normal, and then we stop when we have two loops on our hook. We take the color that we were working with, move it to the front, hold it, and then we're going to grab our new color. Okay. So I like to leave, I don't know, what is that? Four inches, five inches as a tail so I can weave it in at the end. And so then I just loop it on my hook like that. Sorry, this is kind of difficult when I'm holding this up. Okay, there we go. I loop it and then I pull through the two loops on my hook to complete the stitch. Okay, and then you take the color you're not working with anymore, you give it a tug, and you move it to the back. Okay, now we have our new color that we have on our hook. And we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five stitches with the new color. So we need to decide, are we going to carry this color through, or are we going to create another bobbin and have the other bobbin of this cream color right here to grab and just keep it on this side of the work. Does that make sense? So you would have two cream balls, one and two for each side of the work. For my hay pumpkin um, table runner, that's what I did because it has such a big contrast in colors with the black and the cream. I had bobbins of color and I kept it so I didn't have to go back and through as much back through it as much. So it was more intarsia crochet. For the sake of this tutorial, let's do um, tapestry and I'm going to carry my cream along these orange brown stitches. Okay, so what I do, I have on the back here. I've got my cream that I'm going to carry along and I'm just going to hold it right here ready to sandwich it in between these orange stitches. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch and you can see I have on the back side of the work I have this cream color I am sandwiching in between the stitches. So it is on the back end of my work here and then I yarn over. I've got two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two. There you go, just like that. 
and you can see I've got this color I'm not using that was crocheted over so that I can pick it back up in the five stitches. So I'm just going to continue doing my five stitches, two, and I'm crocheting over that cream, three, four, and here's our fifth, which is our last stitch before we change colors. So again, you drop a loop, you pause when you have the two, pull the orange brown forward, and I've got my cream right here ready to grab because I sandwiched it in between these stitches. So then I'm going to, I forgot to mention this before, sorry. When I change colors, instead of yarning over with the new color, I like to yarn under. The reason why is because when you have a design like this, crochet stitches naturally slant. And if you yarn under, when you do a color change, they slant less. It makes it a little more square. So that's what I like to do only for the color changes. Otherwise, I yarn over like normal. So let me show you the difference again. So this is yarning over, and that's how you usually complete a stitch. But when I change colors, I like to yarn under like that. Oops, I split my stitch. Sorry, hold on. I like to yarn under. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> Hold on just a second. Ugh. Okay, yarn under. Okay, and so then I completed my last orange stitch here. And so now I am ready to do the one, two, three, four, five cream to finish this row. And I am not going to crochet over this. Um, because I'm going to just pick it back up and it's just going to be kitty corner. So it's okay. So one, two, three, four, five, and that completes the row. And now I am ready to turn. Okay. So I'm going to turn my work, chain one, and now I am working on the back side of my row here. Can see what it looks like. I've got my working yarn right here and my tail. Okay, so now on row six, I have four and then I have my orange brown here. So I go, oh, did I already change? Yeah, I chained one and then I do one, two, three, four. And now I'm ready to switch colors again. So I am going to pull this forward so it's out of my way, pick up the new color, and I am gonna yarn under and pull through the two loops on my hook, okay? You can see here that I kind of have a, what do you call? I guess this is a diagonal that's in the way because I did not carry my yarn here, but that's okay. I can sandwich that in between my stitches here. So I am going to crochet over this cream and I'm going to make sure I sandwich this diagonal through. Does that make sense? So I am going to insert my hook right here into the next stitch and you can see I've got that sandwich right here and I'm carrying this to sandwich through as well. So I've got those two things that I'm trying to hide. And then I yarn over two loops on my hook, yarn over, draw through two. So you can see, you can't see this is the right side. And you can't see that weird diagonal I had. And you can't see the cream. When you are sandwiching the color that you are not using, when you're sandwiching it through, you need to make sure that you tug it a little bit, but not too tight, because if you tug this too tight, it cinches and it makes the gauge all weird. So you wanna give it a little gentle tug. That's what I like to say. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the brown that we need to do. 
So there's one, two, three, and I want to point out as well, this is the back side, so I am making sure I roll this color I'm not working, I roll it to towards this side and not like that. Does that make sense? It hides better if you kind of hold it like that. You can see there's the right side and it's hiding it a lot better. So there's three, four, oops, five, six. Let me get the tail out of the way. Seven. Okay, so this is the seventh stitch. I stop when I have two loops on my hook. I pull that out of the way, yarn under, and pull through two. And then I take my working orange and I just give it a small little tug. And now I have one, two, three, four left in the row. And you always need to make sure that you count out the rows with tapestry or intarsia crochet because it is really frustrating. <laughs> I mean, you guys know if you get like all the way up here and you're like, oh no, I messed up down here. So just take the time and make sure you do and count it out. Um, learn from me. Okay, so there is our sixth row, you can see. Um, let me show you this seventh row with this in the middle and then um, we'll probably end for the day. So I chain one, I turn, and I have three cream, three orange. So I'm going to do one, two, three, but I'm going to pause when I have two on my hook, pull that forward, pick up my orange, yarn under, and complete the stitch. Okay, and then I give it a little tug. So now I do three. One, two, three. I pause, don't complete that stitch, and then I pick up the cream yarn under. Okay, so once you get in the rhythm, it becomes really natural switching between colors. One, two, three. And then I change to orange again. So I pull that forward, pick up the orange, yarn under, and then three. One, two, three. And then pause, turn, complete the stitch, drop it, and then complete the row with three and cream. Okay, so another point that I need to make is that when you are doing tapestry crochet, you have to look at the next row and make sure that you're lining your um, contrasting color up to be able to pick it up in a good spot in the next row. So in row eight here, I dropped it and it's fine. I can pick it up easily again. So that's just something to be aware of as well. Um, so anyway, thank you guys for joining me today. Um, this is so fun. I Oh, look at that. It's like the same size. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I hope you guys, um, enjoyed that with me. I love chatting and talking about tapestry crochet. It's like one of my favorite crochet techniques to do. So anyway, I hope you are surviving the heat if you have heat and I hope you have a great Friday. Thanks again for joining me. My name is Rachel Alford from Cozy Nooks Designs. Thanks. Bye.